Update 8. Hi, it's me again. I want to thank everyone who has sent me kind messages and support here on Reddit and even on other platforms. This has really blown up, and frankly, it's totally bizarre to see my life plastered all over the internet. But it's also nice to see so many people seeming to be genuinely concerned for me. It helps a lot. At first I had a bit of trepidation about how visible this became, like, what have I done? But since this past weekend, I decided to just roll with it. After all, the cat is already out of the bag and I really believe I've done nothing wrong here, despite a small minority of commentators saying otherwise. I guess there is a lot to go over, and so much has happened. Most of it, if I'm honest, hasn't been that great. Well, it's actually been downright awful, but I'll get to that. First off, I left Mark's house pretty late that night. Sarah already knew I was out discussing business with him, although she had no idea that the business was actually her sister's affair. But still, it was getting to an unreasonable hour, mostly because I was trying to get up the nerve to go home and face her. After about two or three pep talks from Mark, I finally got off my keister and texted Sarah I was coming home and left in my car. I was pretty surprised when I got there, because when I walked into the house, Evelyn was crying on the couch with Sarah. I hadn't seen Evelyn's car in the driveway when I came home, so this was probably the last thing I was expecting. I froze for a moment and almost turned around and left. This was not how I imagined this going down, and I knew that Evelyn's presence was going to make a bad situation a million times worse. Still, I had a timetable that I wanted to move on. I had friends I needed to notify and wedding preparations to cancel, and the proverbial clock was ticking in the back of my head. When I entered the room, both Sarah and Evelyn looked up at me in acknowledgement, but the tirade of accusations never came. I just stared back, raising my eyes in question. The moment passed, and Evelyn went back to crying, Sarah back to comforting, and I let it awkwardly hang in the air for half a minute. While I thought, it seemed that Marty hadn't mentioned my assistance in the uncovering of Evelyn's affair. I decided to play dumb, not for any reason other than I wanted to see how Sarah reacted. I took a seat on a recliner, put down my laptop bag, and took my phone out of pocket. I made it look like I was fidgeting with it, and then asked him what's going on. Evelyn just continued to cry. But Sarah looked at me and said, Marty is divorcing Evie. Well, yes, I figured as much. I decided to push ahead with the obvious question. What for? I asked her. Sarah stopped patting Evelyn's back for a moment and looked at me. I could almost see her face twist and contort. Imagine the look a five-year-old makes when you tell them to eat their broccoli or finish their lima beans. Evelyn shot Sarah a look that I didn't need to be a sister to understand. And there was a pregnant pause until Sarah finally said she cheated on him. Now, I have to admit, this response freaking floored me. This was absolutely not what I was expecting. Sure, the more cynical readers here might think, well the cat was out of the bag, so there's no point in hiding it. And yes that's true, but it's also true that she could have just as easily feigned ignorance, or even worded it another way. Like, Marty accused Evie of cheating instead of basically confirming it to my face. Maybe I'm being pedantic here, but it's part of my job to pay attention to not only what people say, but how they say it. Evelyn wasn't happy about this. She kind of crumpled into the couch a bit and did this strange combination of a sigh and sob at the same time. I wanted to press on, go for the gold so to speak, but I must have stammered a bit and Sarah probably interpreted as shock and well she would have been right in a sense, just not how she assumed. Did you know? I asked. Sarah didn't say anything. She just nodded, her hand still rubbing her sister's shoulder. I didn't hesitate and asked for the obvious follow-up, how long? The answer came back a lot easier than I thought it would. Six months. I was shocked by how easily she admitted to it. Evelyn was shocked as well that she smacked her sister's hand off her, and I think even Sarah was a little shocked at saying it out loud. I leaned back in the recliner and rubbed my face. Time to tug the rest of that band-aid clear off. We're not getting married. There were two looks like stunned goats and a chorus of, huh, what, from both sisters. I stood up and repeated myself. We're not getting married. I can't marry someone who would cover up adultery, especially not for six months. Sarah sprang off the couch and opened her arms. The body language was, you can't be serious. But I just put my hands in front of myself. I'm serious. I don't like this, not one bit. I don't like that you took part in this and I can't get married to you with how I feel. It would be a mistake. The waterworks started immediately, and even Evelyn did that thing with her mouth that looks like a perch trying to suck air. There were wails from Sarah, accusations of not loving her, appeals to my sense of duty, to the loss of money, the inconvenience to all our friends, the embarrassment of it all. 
It was frankly nothing I hadn't already thought about, but it definitely felt different hearing Sarah say it, through body racking sobs. It was at this point that I probably made a big mistake. Well, maybe not, because I have no idea how long Marty would have kept my involvement in everything off the books. But in an effort to convince Sarah of the finality of it all, I said, look, I already canceled the honeymoon. It's not happening. I knew it was a bomb the second it left my mouth, and the explosion was damn near immediate. Evelyn, to her credit, had always been pretty quick on the uptake, which is probably how she had managed to fool her husband for so long. I could almost see the realization dawning on her when she put it all together with my appearance at the bar earlier in the evening. She screamed, you son of a bitch, you son of a bitch, and flew across the room at me. Now, I'm not a huge guy, but I'm no slouch either, but the force that Evelyn flung herself at me had me staggering backwards, and I barely had enough time to get my hands up before she started raking my face with her fingernails. I almost lost the phone I still had in my hand, but still managed to push her away and say very loudly, Evelyn get off me. Sarah, get your sister under control. Evelyn made another lunge for me, but surprisingly Sarah did exactly what I asked her to and wrapped her arms around her sister's waist and held her in place. I looked at Evelyn and yelled, get out of here right now or I am calling the police. Holding my phone up for emphasis, Sarah asked both of us to calm down. She said to me, Opie, she doesn't have anywhere to go right now and Marty took her car keys. That explained the lack of a car in the driveway, but I didn't care. I was 100% through with Evelyn, and I was going to make sure she knew it. I marched into my home office and locked the door and dialed the cops. I told them I had been attacked by my fiancé's sister and had locked myself in my office, that I was bleeding from my face. Evelyn had scratched me pretty good along the inside of my left eye, and that my vision was blurry and I feared for my life. I even told them that I had recorded the entire altercation on my phone. Just as I was finishing up my conversation, Sarah comes knocking on the door. Opie, please come out. We need to talk about this. And please, I love you. Don't do this. We don't need to do this. And even Evelyn is sorry. She wants to apologize. I'm pretty sure that last one was a lie, but Sarah was obviously losing it. I didn't answer her, and her attempts to cajole me out of the office ended probably right when the police rocked up to our front door. I could hear Sarah talking to them, and I decided to come out. The cops were two males, one of them looked younger than me, maybe around Sarah's age, and the other one looked older and more annoyed about life in general. I introduced myself, pointed at Evelyn, stating that she attacked me, and offered to show the cops the recording I made. The younger one asked me if I wanted to press charges, I said yes. He asked me again if I wanted to press charges, I said yes again. At this point, both cops looked at each other, and before the young cop could open his mouth again, I said, yes damn it. I want to press charges. I have video evidence and this is going to court or else I'm going to call up your boss, dropping his name here and ask him to come down and do it himself. I think they were pretty surprised that I knew his name. Not that we are friends or anything, but given my line of work, I spend plenty of time interfacing with local law enforcement and I have met most of the brass or talked to them on the phone a couple of times in the last few years. Honestly, at this point, I was getting pretty hot under the collar. And while I get what these guys were thinking, I don't agree with it at all. Facts are facts. Sure, I might not be bleeding out on the floor, but Evelyn assaulted me in my own home, and I wanted her gone. Thankfully, the situation didn't immediately escalate, and the two officers handcuffed Evelyn and put her in the back of the patrol car. She was squealing and crying like some sort of gibbering maniac the entire time. Sarah wasn't much better. She just kept going, no, please no, over and over again. At this point, the younger cop circled back and asked us if everything was okay here. I just told them I was going to bed. He asked Sarah again and she didn't immediately answer. So he goes, is everything okay here ma'am? It was clear what he was fishing for. At this point, I really disliked this guy, but I bit my lip. Sarah finally realized that the cop was addressing her and she just nodded at him. Obviously, the guy is not satisfied with this and starts to ask her again. At which point I interject and say, if you want to go on a fishing expedition, you might want to do it over there on the lawn where my doorbell camera isn't recording you. I think at this point I had pushed my luck with this guy one too many times. But what could I do? I think I was probably about 30 seconds from getting the cuff slapped on me, until his partner came up and basically pulled him away. He was an older man, probably in his late 50s, and probably didn't want to process two arrests right at the beginning of his shift especially when one of them was obviously going to be more trouble than it was worth. 
I'm pretty sure he talked him out of it and they left, carrying Evelyn away and hopefully out of my life forever. At this point, I'm thinking about if I want to stay here or not. The fact that my parents live a couple of hours away, combined with the thought of about how poor I am going to be in the short term here, ruled out either their place or a hotel, so I just decided to sleep in the guest room. Sarah made some futile efforts to get me to engage with her in conversation or to sleep in our bed, but I just told her we'd talk tomorrow and that I was tired and didn't want to be disturbed. Thankfully, she let me be and I crashed hard. Harder than I had in years, which pretty much brings us up to speed to the last update. But dear friends of Reddit, let me tell you this. The next day was by far the weirdest freaking day of my life. To start with, I woke up at 11 a.m. Sarah was still home and she had cleaned the house from top to bottom. I mean, the floor sparkled, the toilet shined. I could lick the linoleum in the bathroom and it'd probably be minty fresh. She had obviously been busy, but when she saw me, she sort of hovered out of immediate range. Not quite engaging, but looking like she wanted to say something. I get it. Last night was traumatic for everyone and she was probably uncertain. Like, did I just cancel the wedding in the heat of the moment? Was I serious about this? Was I really angry? I took a deep breath and told her we needed to finish talking. She tried to sit next to me on the couch, and I thought about rebuffing her, but didn't. We were not getting married, but I didn't need to act like I hated her, because truthfully, I didn't. I was disappointed in her, decently disgusted by some of the things I had read in her text exchanges between her sister, but we were both hurting here, and I didn't want to make it any worse, or escalate things to a point where life could get any more complicated than it already was. It took some more convincing on my part for Sarah to truly and fully believe the wedding was off, she was not taking it well. Hell, that's an understatement. She was a wreck. I think she was hyperventilating a few times. I was holding it together better, but obviously not only was this my idea, I had also had longer to come to terms with it. Finally, she asked a serious question. What about us? I know I am going to get a lot of hate from people for this, especially the kind of Redditors that think every infraction in a relationship is grounds for nuking it from orbit. And indeed one could even say that my calling off the wedding was like dropping a Moab on our six-year partnership. But truthfully, I didn't have an answer for Sarah in that moment. I just didn't know, and I told her so. I said, I read all those text messages, and it showed me a side of her that I didn't know existed, and that I wasn't certain about her or our relationship anymore. I said I couldn't understand why she would go along with Evelyn putting down Marty and joining in, and even egging her on and cheating on not only him, but their daughter too. She just kept saying, I know, I know, it was wrong, I know. I asked her for an explanation, but she couldn't provide one. She just said that she got carried away and that she had to choose her sister. I told her that I thought a good sister was someone who kept you on the straight and narrow and didn't give you a free pass to be a douchebag. She agreed with me and said that she would do better, but that Evelyn had always been the boss when they were kids and she was always the follower. I get this, I have an older sibling too. And while I'm a bit more independent, I also spent the last 18 years of my life with him living on the other side of the planet, except for the odd occasional visit around Thanksgiving or Christmas. But still, maybe I had a leg up on Sarah because my older sibling was a decent guy while Evelyn was a piece of trash. Now here is where I get the second major freaking shock of my life in like 48 hours. Sarah says to me, it's not fair. It's not fair. What's not fair? I ask her. You were seeing that bimbo wife Mandy girl on Instagram last year, and I got over it. I was so hurt, but I got over it. Why can't you get over this? Why? Huh? What? What the heck is she talking about? Who is this bimbo wife Mandy? Like, I have no freaking clue. I asked her if she was high or having a psychotic break. Like, okay, that was mean of me, but I have absolutely not been doing cyber s or s thing or whatever with anyone, especially not some Instagram girl. I'm protesting pretty loudly at this point and Sarah is yelling at me through her tears, telling me that she saw the messages last year and that she decided to not confront me because I had stopped it. Evidently, she had been checking my socials from my home computer when I'm at work, which should have been really boring because I have only family and a couple of work friends on there. I try to make this case to her, offering to let her log into all my accounts and check for herself, but she's just calling me a liar and a pervert and all sorts of stuff. She starts throwing stuff at me, and so things are getting out of hand, and I tell her that if she throws one more thing, I'll have her taken out of this house just like her sister. She swears at me and stomps off to the master bedroom and slams the door. Now, at this point, I am so damn confused I barely know what to think. 
So I head into my office, fire up my desktop, and type Bimbo Wife Mandy into Google. And sure enough there is an Instagram, a Twitter, a Reddit even. And of course, an Only Fools. I click on one of the Instagram links, and up comes a post of an um, extremely busty woman. Like clearly pushing the limits of science and technology. And oh, guess where she's from? Australia. Well everyone, remember all the nice stuff I was saying about my brother? Guess who was staying with us last Christmas all the way from Australia? Guess who I told, sure, go ahead and use my office computer to play games if you have jet lag. As far as I can tell, my brother, after his wife and kids went to sleep, logged into either Insta or OF or something and was probably paying money to sext with this girl. What a great freaking guy. Now I would love to call my brother and not only confirm my suspicions, but also give him a goddamn earful. But it's like 2 or 3 in the morning there, so it's going to have to wait. But I am crawling the walls here trying to sort out how I feel about everything. I feel totally let down by everyone. I think to myself, damn, what is this world coming to? For a brief moment, I try to connect the dots between whatever the hell Sarah saw my brother do and what she did with Evelyn. But try as I might, it doesn't really come together. Maybe she's a more tolerant or forgiving person than I am, which is why she didn't confront me when she saw this. But I wish she had. It would have given me an opportunity to directly tell her my whole personal stance on these things, and to even show her how I would act. It might have influenced her in a good way later on. Or maybe it wouldn't have mattered, I don't know. All I know is that this post is becoming a novel, and I have blown off most of the morning when I should be working, to get this out of my head and onto this page. I feel better for doing it, but there are still probably another two to three posts left to tell. I'm not going to post them to the subreddit anymore, I'm not sure that they'd let me but I will try to quietly update my profile in the next day or two with the rest of the blowout. Talking to my brother, talking to my parents and Sarah's parents, and finally where Sarah and I stand. One thing that I can say however, is it seems like most of my immediate family relationships are incredibly strained for various reasons. My parents are largely supportive, but that's becoming less so now that the reality of the financial loss is setting in. Yes, the marriage is still off, that was pretty much a certainty from the get-go. Sarah's parents are a bit angrier, and I'm sure they are sticking pins in voodoo dolls crafted in my image right now. Evelyn, for people who are wondering, is no longer in jail. She got Sarah to bail her out. And I even laid into Sarah for that, calling her her sister's underling. Which I think actually struck a chord with her, because she wrote me like a 20-page letter about how her sister always bossed her around throughout her entire childhood. I've read it twice now, and I wish we had talked about this pretty much any time within the last six years. Maybe things would be different. I don't know. I know the update is coming, but if Sarah had told me that she forgave me for something which is cheating, my first thought would be to wonder what she had been up to that allowed her to give that a pass. I know you guys are suspicious about this, and I was too, for like a hot minute. But I meant what I said previously. Sarah has never given me any reason to doubt her, especially on this front. She's a homebody, works almost exclusively with women doesn't have any guy friends, and never does girls night or even after work drinks. She's an elementary school teacher, it's not quite the culture. Sure, there's an off chance that maybe she managed to carry out an affair under my nose, but honestly, I'm not seeing it. My gut tells me no it didn't happen, and I have no reason to not trust my gut. I think she's just extremely conflict avoidant, going along with her sister's cheating and not confronting Opie about his supposed cheating. She just doesn't want to rock any boats. I will say that she definitely has that people pleaser attitude in general, so I am somewhat sympathetic to her messed up relationship with her sister. But like I said elsewhere, I'm not really sure what even recognizing that means for our relationship. We're in a pretty bad place right now to be honest. 